Okay, my friends, there's been a big mystery about Brown's gas, and with electron flood theory, it's fully obvious what it is. The nucleus of a hydrogen is not one big proton. The nucleus is a zillion little tiny electrons. You can flood more electrons in there, and it will become a charged hydrogen. You can have hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, and a ton of different isotopes in between because they are more than just protons. They accept a ton of extra electrons here and there, and that gives them this Brown's gas capability. And wait and see what Brown's gas is. And first of all, I'm going to explain to you why Brown's gas works. They first of all compress the environment the gas is being produced in. Now, compressed means, what do you do? You get, all right, you can, pull, that's power. That is power. All that was was air out of a compressor. That is power. Now, so first of all, we do, we take the air that's in the, in the water and so forth, and we pressurize it. So we've already got it under pressure. Now watch what happens. This is she de Montfort. And this is welding with water by Spiro. And he he's welding with water. Where do you see what the stuff he does? The neutralizer will operate at a pressure of 50 pounds per square inch. We'll use 40 volts of direct current and draw 150 amps of electrical current. That is a ton of electrical current. 150 amps is a ton. And you need like 10 gauge wire to let that that much electricity flow through electrons. Now, it's, it's direct current, and it's forcing these electrons into the water. A 12-volt battery is connected to three cells, which are of the type configured in the hydroxy machine prototype. The cells sit in a container of sodium hydroxide. All right, sodium hydroxide, salt, basically. A lot of salts in here. And what do the salts do? They have a lot of extra electrons. They can give and take electrons. Now, what they're doing is forcing the oxygen to separate away from the hydrogen. But additionally, because they're using electrons, the, uh, the hydrogen is taking more electrons, and they're actually literally building hydrogen. They're making chunks of hydrogen-ish molecules. They're extremely violent and volatile, and when they recombine with the oxygen, they just turn into electrons. Very, very cool stuff. And water at a 20% ratio. It demonstrates the ability of the cells to produce hydroxy gas. Through the top holes of the insulation, hydroxy gas in vast quantities is pushed out of each cell as liquid is drawn in from similar holes on the underside of the cells. HTL have produced a machine which effectively takes water as a feedstock for hydroxy gas manufacture and then returns the gas to water whilst focusing and utilizing the energy byproduct to perform all of these tasks. This unit is a major technological breakthrough. It will deliver sufficient hydrogen and oxygen gas to weld and or cut steel, aluminium, and ceramics. That's cutting a hole through a brick. This is so hot it can vaporize titanium. It's literally raw electrons. More importantly, it will do it at a cost which is a fraction of current welding and plasma cutting costs. Other applications include motor vehicle hydrogen conversion, eradication of... They have all kinds of things, but this is just absolutely amazing power in this these, and there is no uh, bad vapors. It's, you're strictly converting back oxygen and hydrogen. Watch what he does with this. And a hand may be passed through it quickly. This is not a recommended procedure and is only a demonstration. 
Yeah, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Mild and stainless steel up to two millimeters can be welded. This is a high strength granular penetration where a strength up to 100,000 pounds per square inch has been achieved. This is literally just making the molecules be the same together. It's, it's, it's taken so many electrons into that material that all of the other electrons become really like jello and then when they cool down they reset and they take on the same characteristics as their neighbors. Two pieces of aluminium can be fused together using common aluminium filter rod and flux. No carbon is formed, the properties of aluminium are not weakened, and the weld is as strong as aluminium itself. It's, it is, it's exactly, it's unchanged. Ceramics can also be welded together. This may have application in restoring large broken ceramic artifacts, or in modifying or mending damaged ceramic pipes. They're literally melting bricks back together. This weld is used for sealing and is strong under compression, but not tension. He melted it is that also ceramic. possible to weld steel to ceramic. A hole is initially melted in the ceramic, and a portion of the steel is then also melted as it is placed into the melted ceramic. This technique may be valuable in the building industry. Using compressed air, 20 millimeters of mild steel is cut. This multifunction unit operates without bottles, but compressed air is used to produce a plasma stream. Using compressed air, three millimeters of steel is cut and shaped. A unit which separates hydrogen and oxygen is now being tested, and hydrogen used to produce a plasma stream is expected to cut much more efficiently. Again, no bottles are required, which means that one machine will have the ability to undertake DC arc, which can weld up to 20 millimeters, plasma cutting, and gas production. Gas can be produced now at 1,770 litres per hour. If we burn liquid petroleum gas in air, we produce black smoke consisting of hydrocarbon emissions. The black smoke in the background is from acetylene only, with carbon particles filling the air. When the hydroxy is mixed with the acetylene, a partial carbonizing of the flame illustrates the unburnt acetylene at the centre of the flame. As the hydroxy gas increases in volume, a neutral flame is achieved. The high temperature impeded the formation of large molecules characteristic of hazardous chemicals. Basically what they're saying is they are breaking down the particles that would normally come off in chunks that could be harm you. They're breaking them down into extremely tiny molecular form which, you know, basically electrons. A new electrolyzer incorporating a lightweight inverter is currently being built. It will measure approximately 100 by 40 by 40 centimeters. The electrolyzer will operate at a pressure of... Right, we saw this before, but this is just a phenomenal technology and I don't know why it's not being used and being thought of in a different way look because it, 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 this isn't the only guy that's looking at bronze gas at work uh, here's one super powerful flame 5072 degrees fahrenheit produce hydrogen from water and i'm i'm, I'm sure i told this story before but i'm going to tell you again my father hold on here's his picture right here he was with allegheny Stud ludlam steel corporation he was a general manager down there warrenford special steel steel and uh, alloys division all that during world war ii he told me that he had a car that he rigged up to run on water but he always he said he used kerosene too now what the kerosene was for i'm not sure whether it was to get it going or to, to somehow put the Venturis together, but he was using a Venturi to work with the water to make the car run on water and um, kerosene. It was a long time ago he told me about it, but he couldn't get gas, I guess, was the problem. 
And uh, but anyway, he got the car working, and he said it worked fine. Um, I don't know what to think about that. Whether it, there's any possibility of doing that, I mean, I could see the Venturi, and you've seen it, or, or you will see it. It it forces particles to become so excited that they atomize, and that's what a Venturi does. It atomizes gasoline. That's what they were built for. Well, gasoline is a hydrocarbon. Well, water is oxygen and hydrogen, which are the two most combustible things there is when you put them together. And they burn pretty clean. So I think we got to look at that Venturi again uh, with electron flood theory as the basis because that then it starts to make sense what we can do with it. And maybe we can multitask and make venturis going in different directions against each other and sideways and who knows what you can do but you can't do anything until you start thinking about it and I have shown the venturi works it separates the strong particles from the weak particles at the venturi and here is a harvested range here's how somehow we've got to get into this and withdraw this material whether you have to do it as you're combusting it here and use it on demand somehow I don't know exactly how I mean I don't have the answers for this at all I, I can show you a lot of things that make sense how you would end up making it work they have atomic layers now that you could have graphene and so forth that you could probably dope with something and then you might even be able to shoot a laser this way and this way and this way and then this one and have them all come this way through that graphene into some collection device and I don't know if it's possible at all because these are these are nothing but raw electrons that are even the uh, electron neutrino portion of the electron. Their natural intention in my world is to want to come back to one of these guys. Now how you could keep it from coming back, put it in a thermos bottle or something, I don't know. Or you have to create it on demand. Now the, the thing that we were just looking at, this device that they have here, apparently they have like 15 liters of gas on in that storage device and then when you want to go and weld and so forth you turn it on and brrrr, it creates more of that gas at that time and it's so heavily infused with electrons it literally just enters into the matrix of the material that it's it's being pushed into because everything's made out of electrons and if you push more electrons in you are going to change the way they're attached to their neighbors which are the nucleuses so they now you are going to transmutate that material into something else it's going to turn glassy or it's going to whatever it does but you have changed its nuclear bits which makes it not that same material it's a different molecule different atom different element different gas whatever it is and uh, you know this is something that should be looked at you know I, I don't have the answers and I don't have the ability so somebody should do it though I think I've shown enough to make it you know a compelling case for there's something here all right, vayos con Dios, amigos, I love you all.